about to leave Already packing, come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away to a place where we don't know About to see the world in action What we can be, life with no distractions We'll get away, this is what we waited for Evening, everyone. Welcome to our latest AQA Edible Psychology live revision stream, and it's uh, another biopsychology session tonight with Lara and, and and two familiar faces. So it's um, it's Zeit Gebers Gebers Zeit Gebers. Anyway, pacemakers. It's biopsych tonight. I, I, have I impressed you, Lara and I'm with my uh, my pronunciation of tonight's topic? I can tell I have. I think it's a good job we're here. Hey, what do you think? Yeah. I think it's a good point. <laughs> It's a good point. So in which case, then, I will not take any more of uh, our audience's <laughs> time, except to say welcome, particularly if you're coming to one of these uh, live streams for the first time. You'll enjoy it. It's hard work for 30 minutes or so, but well worth it. Uh, so uh, Lara and Anne will guide you through a series of activities on tonight's topic, which I'm not going to mention again. And um, so please use the live chat to have a go at the, the activities or ask any questions as we go. Uh, last week, when we were looking at um, hemispheric lateralization, if I recall, uh, quite a few terms came up and uh, we weren't always sure about what they meant so students were asking in the live chat and we managed to get some really good uh, follow-up uh, responses uh, to those questions so please do if you watch on uh, catch up and replay of course live chat's not not open for that but uh, maybe give yourself a bit more time for the activities i think we're good to go who's starting tonight lara and who's who wants to lead us off tonight i'm starting okay. off Okay, so as Jim's just said, it's zeitgebers and pacemakers. There's lots of uh, quite tricky terminology in this in this area and things that are difficult to say, but it's more important for you to know how to how to spell them, how to write them down. So again, this is from the biopsychology section of paper two. As I said, there is a lot of specialist terminology, um, and you need to be thinking about how it applies to cycles, in particular. 
in particular the the sleep wake cycle but you can think about how these things relate link to other cycles as well but mostly we tend to focus on sleep wake so it's so it's really important then when you're preparing for this in your exam to learn the specialist biological terminology make sure you know what the key terms you uh, mean and use them appropriately um, because that's one you know really good way of showing your knowledge know where to recycle content because some of the content um, from the different kinds of biological rhythms you'll be able to use here but obviously you've got to use it appropriately and make it relevant to this topic area and remember that you can apply you can apply issues and debates to aid your discussion points and to aid your evaluation so issues and debates can be very useful for that particularly when we're in a biological section as well okay so if we start the first activity it's missing vowels we've done this one before unless this is the first time for you so you need to use the chat box and write in what that key term is with the vowels obviously okay well well done rm first in there um not quite not quite spelled right <laughs> um but you have got the right answer but it is a really hot oh thank you callum yeah it's not quite the super chiasmic nucleus but i always tend to want to write it like that um it's the super chiasmatic nucleus but that is a bit of a tongue twister that one okay so does anyone know anybody know where this is whereabouts is it in the body so it's in the human body somewhere you could start off by thinking which part of the body yes can we be more specific it is in the brain yes and it's in the limbic system can anybody be more specific as to what part of the brain okay there's no answers coming through people might be flicking through the notes okay it is in the high oh well done Fiona. new as i said it somebody did come in so it is in the hypothalamus okay in the brain and it's very close to the optic ch ch i can't say it chiasm <laughs> um, and that means that it's close to the eye so it's able to receive light from the eyes um okay so if you move to the next one okay so how about this okay yeah natural night natural light so how does natural light come into this is it an example of a zeitgeber or is it an example of a pacemaker well done well done rm in there straight away so it is an example of a zygote i'm not going to say more about that now because we're going to be talking about it a bit later okay so let's have the next one then well done emma straight in there endogenous pacemakers endogenous what does endogenous mean let me know what it means because we've got these terms endogenous and exogenous but what does endogenous mean it 
internal well done saffron so it's an internal pacemaker it's internal it's within the body whereas the um zygabas are external and they're from outside the body well done have the next one I'm just not going to sit up yet so you're coming in i was rm was first in there again i was just waiting for some other people that's why i didn't say whether that was the answer okay so it's a master clock what which is the master clock in the body which is the master body clock you can use abbreviations if you want now the pituitary gland is the master gland that's talked about as the master gland in the body like the most important one but how about the master clock well done callum yes well done okay this, there it is and you and you spelt it right as well the suprachiasmatic nucleus is the master clock it's like the most important body clock and it is within the hypothalamus but there are other peripheral clocks um, in other organs of the body as well but this is seen as the most important okay if we have the last one for this Okay, so RM and Layla, you, you're both right, but it is seasonal affective disorder, not seasonal affect disorder. Okay, so get, <laughs> it's affective because affect is to do with feelings. Um, so that's why it's sad and not said. Okay, so it's seasonal affective disorder. So just make sure that you get that's the right vowel there. Okay, how does this fit into this topic area? How does it fit into this idea of biological rhythms and zeitgebers and pacemakers? It is an infrate. I have to always look these rhythms up. It is an infradian rhythm, well done. But what seems to trigger it? yeah what in particular changes with the seasons the light isn't it it's the less natural light that can affect mood in some people um, and it is to do with melatonin okay so it shows the influence of external zeitgebers in particular natural light okay that's lovely well done so some really good answers there again so i'm going to pass you over to lara now to do the next um activity Okay, well done guys. Some really good answers coming through this evening. Really impressive. We're going to play the red herring game now, of which we've got three of these. So again, as it says here, which one out of the four items is the odd one out? So let's go over to the first one. So um, this one is which of the four items is the odd one out and why? So we want the justification, not just the odd one out. So we've got light, exercise, meal times, bedtime. Yeah, Danny in there first. Okay, so Danny's saying exercise is the odd one out. RM, you're saying the same. Layla. Yeah, good, Emma. So saying exercise isn't a social cue. Good. Not an exogenous psychobirth, Danny's saying. Yeah, really good. We're, I think we get, we're getting the notion here. Let's have a look at the reveal there. So, yeah, is exercise. I've actually put here that it would be, I mean, the same answers as really what you guys have said, but just in a different way. Um, advice to minimise the effects of jet lag. 
uh, as an example, w you know, you would be saying that, you know, you need natural light, um, set meal times in, in the daytime and, and, and a good bedtime as well to, to kind of um, minimise those effects, as it were. So really good answers, guys. Let's go on to the second one then. Again, we've got some studies here. So which of these is the odd one out? And again, I want the justification as to why it's the odd one out. And some of you might know all of these studies. Some of you may only know a few. Um, so, Laylee, you're saying C is the odd one out. Okay. Okay, so we're getting some... Yeah, so Danny, you're saying Morgan as well. You're saying C. If we've got any, any others want to contribute? Yeah, sorry, you're right, Layla has no capital C, uh, no capital M for the C, yep. Danny, you're saying Morgan is an animal study. Okay, you're right. I guess the question is, what are these all to do with? Okay, interesting. So RM, you're the first one to say A and a different answer. Um, RM... Could you justify that? Have you got any reasons why you might think it's Maguire? Or can you tell us what the Maguire study is about, actually? Yep, so I think that's uh, F. Fionn. You said A as it's looking at brain scans and memory. Um, yeah, Maguire's to do with the plasticity of the brain, the taxi driver stuff. Yeah, spot on it is. Um, so yeah, a lot of you are remembering this already. Yeah, it's the taxi driver study with the um, enlarged hypothalamus, if you like. So the other three studies, just to be clear, are studies that we can use to demonstrate or support pacemakers and zyklobus. Now, before we move on, just from you guys, I want to hear from you how we might use one of these studies. I'm going to let you pick. So B, C or D, pick one of those studies. I want to know how you would use it to support pacemakers or zeitgebers. Let's see how you do on that. So choose either B, C or D study. And if you just really briefly just tell me how you might use it to support pacemakers or zeitgebers. Who's going to get in there first? I'm confident you all probably have heard of or know of B, definitely. So Emma in there first. Yeah, so Sifre went into a cave, no light or evidence of time. Ate and slept when his body told him to. His circadian rhythm didn't really change. Um, yeah, it stayed around the 24 to 25 hours. It actually uh, varied between 25 and 30 hours. Um, and just something to sort of uh, stay on that line of thought with, with the Sifre cave study. And that is, don't forget that he did have a lamp that he turned on and off when he wished to do so. So I know that isn't natural light, but he still had that cue himself that he could use for his body to set it. Um, who else have we got? Oh, there's quite some answers here. Mercy would support exogenous site because it looks at social cues. Good. And RM, you're saying, yep, no exogenous pace may, no exogenous zeitgebers. His sleep wake cycle was affected by much support in the internal body clocks so as supporting endogenous. Good. Um, Morgan, yeah, Danny, you said about the Morgan one. Hamps is when a 22-hour cycle was implanted to a healthy uh, hamster and that hamster adopted so that this SCN 
of the hamster with the rhythm of 22 hours was implanted into another hamster. And again, that hamster actually adopted, like you say, the 22 hour circadian rhythm. So again, all very well explaining, but just remember my wording of the question, guys. You've done really well. You've obviously shown evidence here that you understand, but don't forget you're wanting to tell me how one of these studies supports endogenous pacemakers or exogenous cycles. I can see, Danny, you said at the bottom there, supporting the importance of the SCN as an endogenous pacemaker. Really good. Well done. And Saffron, his body ran free. Yep, spot on. Yep, really good answers, guys. Let's move on to the last red herring. Um, so, again, which one do we think is the odd one out here and why is it the odd one out? <laughs> oh Layla are you saying that about this one do you think this one's a hard one potentially yeah so RM you're saying gender bias Danny you've said the same gender bias yeah why though can we have some elaboration there guys why why might it be gender bias Mercy you think gender bias as well good Gender bias because it doesn't affect anything. What do you mean by that, Emma? Can we can we elaborate that a bit more? Yeah, it doesn't affect anything to do with EZ and EP. Okay, so we we can say that gender bias really has no effect on that. Good. Um, RM, you're saying it doesn't have anything to do with research into sleep-wake cycles. Danny. Yeah, Danny, you, uh, you've raised quite an interesting point there. You said that it's universal across all genders um, and gender doesn't depend on your sleep-wake. So, yeah, spot on. Let's have a little reveal then. So it is gender bias, which is the odd one out. And this is really the other three, just to make note of, is are issues and debates that you can apply to this particular topic area. Okay. Excellent answers. Really good elaboration, guys. Ask some tough questions there. I'm going to pass you over to Anne now to do the give me three. Okay, very quickly then. So while the time is going, I want you to give me th exa three examples of exogenous site givers. <laughs> Got one very quickly. So three. Yeah, sorry, and the uh, music's not working. All the clock. Oh, it's okay, but, uh, don't worry. <laughs> okay, we'll, um, I've got my watch on. <laughs> light, temperature and noise, natural light, social cues, food, yes, like meal town, meal times. Oh, blue light, that's an interesting one. I can't sleep with a blue light from a telly on the, in a room. I have to go and unplug it. I really can't. Um, here we've got natural light, a lot, yeah, I suppose if it went off at a certain time, yes, okay, lovely, okay, so let's, I think you've covered the answers that we've got here, but we've got some more examples, so remember we said, somebody put, um, <laughs> cat, you can't wait, sure. so remember we said that exogenous site givers, their external cues, their cues coming from the outside that affect our biological rhythms. And they can be things like sunlight, meal times, different seasons and the light during the seasons. But you've got some good ones there as well, some additional ones. Um, can, does anybody know the word that we use to talk about it affecting our biological rhythms? There's quite a nice word. It begins with E to give you a clue. We talk about these things doing what to our biological rhythms? And training them, yes. We talk, them, talk about them and, and resetting them, but entraining them. I think entrain is just a really nice word, but it does mean that they, they reset them. So although, you know, things like the cave studies have suggested that perhaps our kind of natural biological rhythm is about 
25 hours rather than 24 but it's reset every day by um you know by the time that we get up and the meals that we have and so on and those sorts of things keep it to 24 hours because we live in a 24 hour you know with a 24 hour clock in our world and that's basically what entrain means it means they reset it um yeah <laughs> so yeah it also explains why you can find it very you know like if at the weekend where you don't have to get up, you if you don't work anyway you don't have to get up to go to college and so on so you might go stay up later sleeping in the morning and then monday morning it feels really dreadful um you know because it, you know because your body clock it hasn't kept entrained by getting up at the same time every morning um so it's just it's a nice word so these things help to reset our body clock and keep it to that 24 hour cycle unless we're put in a cave where it you know can can be free running okay so that was quick for me so i'm going to pass you back to um to lara now for the true false quiz okay as it says guys is this true or false endogenous pacemakers and exogenous cyclers are linked or connected So Laylee, you got in there first, Danny saying yes. All right, then who's going to be the first to justify this for me? Who can explain how they are linked then if we're saying it's true? Well done. Well done. Yeah, so it's true. Who can justify it for me? Who can, who can just elaborate that for us? Explain it. Layla's thinking. Emma, you've said biological rhythms. So, Callum, our endogenous pacemakers are entrained. I like that, adopting that word, by our exogenous cyclers. Quite right. Yeah, light influences the. Oh, we're getting really specific now. The production of melatonin. Um, Danny put is controlled by endogenous and kept 24 hours by exogenous. Yeah, so again, exogenous kind of having a control over our endogenous pacemaker exogenous like social cues reset the biological rhythm elisa you said the scn is a um, endogenous pacemaker but it is affected by light which is an outside source which you'll see is exogenous yeah really good answers coming through here yeah they are interconnected and you're all right with what you've said so that's perfect the next one then, the penile gland releases serotonin. Is this true or is this false? All right, Emma got in there first, then Saffron and Layla. So we're thinking it's false elisa you've even put elaboration there false it's melatonin which was actually the question i was going to ask you yeah really good guys it is false and you're quite right it releases melatonin what does melatonin do what does it help with you all seem to know or a few of you need to know about melatonin but what does it do in terms of this topic Yes, yeah, sleep. It can help induce sleep. Yes, I'm a sleepy hormone. Yeah, excellent. Well done. Yeah, perfect. All right. Really good, guys. Really good. So the master clock controls other biological rhythms. Is this true or is this false? And we already know what the master clock is because you went through the savannah earlier. So let's see if we can remember this. So Layla, you're saying false. RM, you're saying true. Okay, we've got some different answers here. Yeah, quite right, Layla. Yep. Yeah. It is the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Yes. How about the rest of us? We want to have a go. 
Does the master clock control other biological rhythms? True or false? What do we think? Sally, you're saying true. Some of you don't know yet. Yeah, that's fair enough. Okay. Yeah, so, all right, we're not sure about this one. This one actually is, in fact, true. It is true because actually it can control other biological rhythms, not necessarily some of the ones uh, that are necessarily in a spec, but yeah, it does control things like sleep and other arousal cycles as well. Um, so it does control other, other rhythms within our body. So well done, those of you that said true there. Let's move on to our next one. So the most important Zeitgeber is mealtimes. True or false? The most important Zeitgeber is mealtimes. What do we think? RM, you're saying false? Danny, you said false. You think it's light. Okay. Fion, you're saying false. And Emma as well. Layla Saffron, well done. Emma, you're saying it's light as well. And RM, you're saying it's natural light. Yes, yeah, spot on, really good. Uh, this one is in actual fact false and it is light, which is known as the most important or, or kind of main zeitgeber, if you like. All right, and our last one then. The sleep-wake cycle is an example of a 24-hour circadian rhythm. I'm going to say that I'm thinking this is a nice, easy one to finish for this particular game, but let's see how we do. RM in there first. Good, good, good. Yes, we are. Looks like we're all kind of unanimous in that. We're all saying true and you are absolutely 100% correct, guys. It is true. Excellent. Well done. Well done, Mercy Callum at the end there. Excellent. All right. Going to pass you over to Anne now. You're going to do a couple of scrambled sentences and then we're going to end the session today after that with an exam question. Okay, so we knew a few a couple of weeks ago, people said they were struggling with the scramble sentences. So we've been using slightly shorter ones, paragraphs, but doing two of them. Okay, so if you've done the sessions before, you'll know that what you need to do is work out the correct order of this. So rearrange them to form, you know, the correct or the perfect paragraph. So do it all in the chat box, put them in the right, the six points in the right order, just use the numbers. And then when we think you've got it right, just press the button, press go, and let's see if you who gets it right correctly in the right order. No, the one comes slightly later than that, Danny. Um, Layla, you've got two, six, three. Oh, you're nearly there. The first three are right. Still getting a few true, trues and falses. I, think, I don't know if you've got a bit of a lag on your, your internet. Okay, you're almost there, Layla, but you just need it's the last three that are not quite in the right order. Just begin with two. Two, six, three. Oh, nearly will. Two, six, three, five, four, one. Almost, Emma. You've got the first. Two, six, three, five, four, one. Sometimes they will work. It's two, six, three, five, one, four. Well done, Saffron. You were the right first one there with the right order. So excellent. But sometimes you could have them slightly differently. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So, despite all the research support for the role of endogenous pacemakers and exogenous zeitgebers, and it's important to get those kind of the right way around, a weakness is that it can still be considered biologically reductionist. 
So remember, because you're talking about biological explanation here, this is one of the areas where you can use reductionism as a valid criticism. For example, the behaviourist approach would suggest that bodily rhythms are influenced by other people and social norms, i.e. sleep occurs when it's dark because that is the social norm and it wouldn't be socially acceptable for a person to conduct their daily routines during the night. You also want like a therefore here. The research discussed here could be criticised for being reductionist as it only considers a singular biological mechanism and fails to consider the other widely divergent viewpoints. But I can see why people might want to go two, one, four, and then give the example, and that that would work too. Um, the main thing is to you know to have to have done all these things explained. You know, not just said why that it's biologically reductionist, but to have explained within the answer why it is biologically reductionist. Okay, so if we move to the second one, same thing, a bit harder this time. We've got eight points. Okay, so put the eight points in the right order again using the chat box like you've just done. A bit trickier this one. Okay, I think people are really struggling with this one. Be on seven four two one six five eight three amazing first person to do it gets them in the right order fantastic well done okay i hope it's not too i hope you're not getting too much background noise for me because it's just started raining here um so starting with seven then there is further research support for the role of exogenous psychovers when sifre returned from an underground stay with no clocks or light it was found that Sifre believed the date to be a month earlier than it was. This suggests that his 24-hour sleep-wake cycle was increased by the lack of external cues, making him believe one day was longer than it was. This highlights the impact of external factors on bodily rhythms. But then we've got like a counter-argument coming in. However, results from a single case study may not provide accurate generalizations on how others would respond to a lack of external cues. This therefore limits the usefulness of this case study in supporting the role of exogenous psychobers. So I've got a bit of evaluation of the study, but it's not just left there, it's taken back to kind of, you know, evaluate the role of exogenous psychobers. So it's linked to the question. Okay, so well done. That was really good, Fionn. First time. First one and you got it completely right. Okay, so I'm going to pass you back to Laura for some exam practice. Really good, guys. That one was a hard one, that second one, wasn't it, Anne? Um, it was. We're going to have a go now at um, an exam question. So let's read this together. So Dolly fell asleep during a lecture at college today. I don't recommend, by the way, guys. Her friend had to nudge her awake as she started to snore. After lesson, Dolly said that she wasn't sleeping at night and that she had gotten in a bad routine of sleep. So the question is, using your knowledge of research into exogenous psychopaths, briefly explain the advice you would give Dolly to get back into a better sleep routine. So, you guys, over to you. You're the psychologist. I want to know, what advice would you give Dolly?
Sammy, wow, straight up. Get off your phone. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Quite a lot of us are doing that, aren't we? Bad routine before bedtime. So, um, Layla, good. In the night, she could close her blind to get rid of light. Um, Mercy, Dolly should be able to have a bedtime schedule. Yeah, what might that look like for you, Mercy? Um, Callum researchers found that blue light can disrupt our um, SCN, so turn off your phone. Good. RM, she should begin by sleeping at night to set her bodily rhythm. This is when melatonin is released to induce sleep. Danny, during the day, expose Dolly to daylight or shine bright light at the back of her knees. Yeah. No bleed light. Excellent. We've got some really good suggestions. During the night, use blackout curtains and get rid of all sources of light. Danny again. Yeah. Really good suggestions here. What have we got, Emma? We've got... Yeah, for example, meal times. You could keep to regular food times, have a regular bedtime schedule where you stop using light or shut the blind. Yeah. Yeah, minimise exposure to light before bed. And what about in the morning, though? So we're saying about, you know, the, the sleep routine before going to sleep, before bedtime. What what maybe advice could we give maybe in the morning or when she needs to wake up? What might we say there? So Emma, we could put an alarm on. Definitely that helps. Getting up at a regular time. Yeah. Emma, good. Make sure she opens her blinds. Increase light in the morning. RM, well done. Yeah, some really good suggestions coming through. Let's have a little look at the suggestions here. So, yeah, Dolly should make sure her light is off at bedtime. So shutting curtains, a lot of you suggested that. And a lot of you have, have picked up this mobile phone thing even with the blue light. Really, really good. Dolly should open her curtains in the morning, expose herself to light to wake up. And somebody said about the alarm clock as well. Good. And Dolly could also use social cues, such as, you know, eating set meals in the daytime and being active in light hours. Um so, yeah, some really good suggestions. I think I think the key here that I just want to also emphasise here is that although we're giving advice to Dolly, that advice needs to be paired with your AO1 knowledge, part of the theory or a study, findings. So you need to give, um, you know, some maybe research knowledge there as well in, in line with that. Perfect. Really good, guys. We've done so well this evening. So don't forget on Tutor to You website, we've got a whole host of different resources to help you work booklets we've got other videos to watch on breakdown of exam questions um loads of tasks and activities as well that you can have a go at so have a little look on the tutor to you website otherwise um that is the end of this session this evening many thanks i, I literally just just woken up just for the end of the session there lara and <laughs> have i have i missed much sorry i had a i fell asleep <laughs> only kidding only kidding you wouldn't you wouldn't tolerate that, would you, Lara Ann? Somebody falling asleep in one of your your lectures or lessons? And well, no, I think I'd well, be worried would. about why they're falling asleep in my lessons. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got some great advice, though, haven't you, in terms of what they can do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think it's definitely a current. I find I think it's a current issue as well um, at the moment with you know students just generally the population using media and mobile phones more. So it's definitely some good real life application advice that you can try and take a leaf out of as it were fantastic another great session and as always amazing answers from the, uh, the students who've, who've joined us live so many thanks to everyone who's who joined us if you find the session useful either live or, or on replay give us a thumbs up on youtube um youtube have got rid of the thumbs down now which is uh, interesting although they're not showing it anymore but we only ever get a thumbs up so uh that's really useful because that will help suggest this session uh, to other psychology students as they're getting ready. If you've got mocks and assessments coming up either before or after Christmas, don't forget that uh, Lara and Anne and the team have put together loads of these sessions this year. I think this is something like number 30, 30 or so. Uh, so if you go I've to tutor2.net, we, we have yeah. loads more to yeah. come. But if you go to tutor2.net forward slash live, uh, go to the replay section and uh, yeah, fill your boots, uh, pick, pick the topics. We've got research methods, we've got attachment, memory, everything's in there, haven't we? Um, for for some extra revision support, if you if you uh, find that helpful, uh, just to mention a bit of product plugging, the I was just been having a look at this. I mentioned this last week, and lots and lots of students have got got hold of it this week. This amazing biopsychology exam buster guide with with all the notes you need, but also lots and lots of example sixteen markers. 
top mark, top grade 16 markers, including one on what we've covered tonight. So might be worth, I'll pop the link in, in the comments box in the video. But there we go. We're back again. Laura, and I can't remember what we're doing next week. Is it a... Oh, I didn't look. Back to I, have and a feeling it, I have a feeling it's issues and debates. If I'm honest yeah. with you. Emma I'm just asked really when the next one is. Emma, the next one is this time next week. So Tuesday at half five. Yep. Oh, Regular time, Emma. Regular time. Session. Don't worry, Obni. You can watch it on playback, okay? Um, and I hope your dinner was good. I'm sure it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the regular date, regular time on, on a Tuesday, 5.30 for all of our psychology sessions and also after Christmas when we come back to start looking at some more exam style stuff. So try to keep the time the same if we can. Um, but yeah, as Lara says, you know, check it out on replay. Go through the whole session. Don't fall asleep during the session. And um, as I said, loads of great stuff on there. Right, superb stuff. Lara, and many, many thanks as always. Uh, we'll catch you next week for our next session. Well done, guys. See you next week. Bye, everyone. See ya. Bye.